Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we will learn about exception handling in Groovy and this topic is very important and it is very easy. I will show you with the help of some examples. So in Groovy we can do exception handli handling similar to uh, Java or other programming languages and we use try and catch block. So we can say try catch. We can use try catch block. We can say try catch and finally and we can also use try and finally blocks now what is this and how do we use them let me show you with an example i will go to my eclipse and this is the groovy project that we created earlier and in this package i will do a right click new others search for groovy and go to groovy type next and create a class so i will say this is for exception handling i will name this as exception handling and finish and I will directly do coding without using a class so here suppose I have a statement I am saying int i equals 1 divided by 0 now this is uh, there will be an error or an exception here because 1 divided by 0 is not defined and if I try to run this I will save and do a right click run as groovy script and you can see we have got an exception which is arithmetic exception if I show you the console here it says arithmetic exception divided by 0 and we have not handled it so in our programs or coding whenever there is some exception it will fail and it will stop the uh, program or it will come out abruptly and stop the execution and throw this exception however we want that whenever there is some exception or some kind of unusual behavior we can handle it properly and then we can control it we can uh, provide some code to handle it so for that we use try and catch so for that we put a try block like this we say try and curly bracket start and then we put all our code inside the try block and curly brackets stop so this is try and you can see here I am getting a um, error because I do not have a catch block so I will also have to give a catch block here and after the end of the try block we create a catch block and here in the catch block I can say I have to catch one exception or some exception and I will say exception and I can also give it any name like exp and then again start curly brackets for exception block and then end curly brackets now here this can be some particular exception for example here I'm getting arithmetic exception so I can also say like catch arithmetic exception like this so it will only catch in case there is any arithmetic exception and not anything else but if I want to catch any exception I can use the super class which is exception so any exception comes in our code it will throw the control here and here we can handle it properly so I can I will just say print ln I am inside exception block so now if I run this again now you can see there was an exception here and it sent the control to the catch block because we are catching the exception here and whatever I want to do I can put my code here and it is printing I am inside exception block now I can do a lot of things in the exception uh, the catch block uh, here I can say I can print the exception cause and message so exp is the variable where I am catching the exception so I will say exp dot uh, get cause it should print the cause I can also say print ln exp dot get message so it will also print the message so if I run this now you can see here it is saying I'm inside exception block there is no cause uh, printed here so it is throwing null here it is printing null but when we say exp dot get message it is printing the message that is divided by 0 and in case you want to put the entire stack trace I can also say exp dot print stack trace and if I run this now you can see it is also printing the entire stack trace so this will give you all the information will give you the line where you have this exception and everything and also the good thing with using this exception handling is now 
you can whenever there is an exception it will come here whatever you want here it will get printed but it will not stop the execution I will just comment this exception print stack trace and suppose after this I have something else for example I have another code where I am saying I am or I will just say another set of code so if I run this now you can see there was an exception here and it went to the catch block whatever I am doing in the catch block is um, it is executing that it is printing this I am inside exception block and all the message and cause and then it is not stopping abruptly it is not coming out it is still continuing with the program and it is printing another set of code and this is very important now you can also have multiple catch blocks so for example I can have I can catch multiple types of exceptions separately for example here I can have another catch block and here I can catch arithmetic exception and here I will say catch block to catch arithmetic exception and if I run this now you can see it is coming inside this catch block because the exception that we have is arithmetic exception so we can have multiple catch blocks and then we can also have a finally block and finally block you can just say finally and then curly brackets start and stop and then whatever you want to print or do any coding you can put here I will say I am inside finally block and what happens here is let me show you I will run this so you see there was an exception here so at this line line number 5 there was some exception and the control came to this catch block which is catching this exception arithmetic exception and it is printing catch block to catch arithmetic exception and then it is going to the finally block and printing I am inside finally block and then it is going ahead with the rest of the code now what if there is no exception if I say 1 divide by 1 which is fine and valid statement there will be no error or exception and if I run this now and you can see there was no exception so there was uh, the control did not go to any of the catch blocks but yes it went to finally block so finally block will be executed every time whether there is an exception or not so if you want to run something every time irrespective of any exception or not you can put that into finally block and you can have a finally block even without a catch block so if I remove all the catch blocks and I just have a try and then a finally block I can do this as well I can run this now and it is running fine so we can have try catch try catch finally or try finally the only thing you should uh, take care is there should be no code between these blocks so after try there should be directly a catch block or a finally block there should be no code between these and here this is what you can do and exception handling is the third part of control structures so if I go to Google and just search for uh, groovy control structures and we have seen this in the earlier session as well if I go to this official documentation of Groovy here you can see in the control structures we have conditional structures that we have learned if else switch case then we had looping structures and this also we learned in the last session and then finally we have exception handling and this is what we have learned now and these are some again some examples for exception handling you can also look at these and you can see we have done multi catch and we have also done finally and I will also copy this and make this available in the notes and all these notes will be available to you along with this video so I hope exception handling is very clear and this is very important I hope all this was very useful for you I will meet you in the next session of Groovy thank you so much for watching